So it happened last February, a week, a year ago, February, 20 months ago. And the sheriff in question is Christopher Cootie. He was introduced to Judge Hatchett as a judge. And the offense happened right there in front of everyone. Uh, he groped her breast. And another sheriff had to hit his hand off of Judge Hatchett's chest. So it's not some, oh, he said, she said business. This is nuts. Absolutely nuts. The judge uh, admitted it. He pleaded guilty to sexual battery. He stepped down from an office that he's held since 2017. He's agreed to one year of probation, 400 hours of community service, and a $500 fine. And Judge Hatchett is live with me now. Friend, I did not expect to have an interview with you like this. First, I want to say I'm sorry this happened to you, and yes. hello, and I miss you. I haven't talked to you in a while. You. Are you okay? I and um, I appreciate you reaching out to me as soon as it's happened. Ashley, you were one of the first people who called to check on me, and I have not forgotten that. I will never forget that. Thank you. Well, we go back a long way, and I was really so crestfallen to hear that this had happened, and I was just... I was so shocked, too. I just don't understand it. Can you walk me through exactly what happened? Like, as many details as you feel free or feel comfortable sharing? No, I'm going to share all the details. And I've been very transparent, was careful not to make any comments before the adjudication. You know, for obvious reasons, I, don't, I didn't want to in any way be criticized for tainting the process. Let me tell you exactly what happened. I was there as a guest of retired Sheriff Thomas Brown who is now the U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of Georgia. At the time he was retired, he was there. I was there as his guest at an informal reception for the Georgia Associations of Sheriffs. They have a winter meeting and a, and a uh, summer meeting. And it was a winter meeting. It was January 2022. I was greeted. Um, people were very kind. They were excited to meet me. People wanted to take pictures. And so it was such a comfortable situation. I had no reason to feel that I was in any place that was not safe. So if you can imagine a kind of a top that you stand up at a table that tight, I was at the end of the corner. And then the short end of that table, Cody, I'm going to refer to tonight as the defendant, came and stood next to me, uninvited, came to the table. Thomas Brown turns around and says, I'm a retired sheriff, introduced himself. He did not know Cootie. I certainly did not know him. He then stood there, and I was engaged in conversation. Um, yes, I, you know, my family's from Georgia, but I don't know where Blackley County is. Just making conversation. Actually, he took his index finger and did that. It's in the heart of Georgia. I did not take offense to that. What happened next is absolutely unbelievable. He then grabs my left breast, and I'm going to go into great detail with you, grabs my left breast, squeezes it, and rubs on it in the heart of Georgia, in the heart of Georgia. I was so angry with myself later because I didn't slap him. I didn't kick him. I was absolutely frozen. Thomas then turns back around, had to literally take his hand off of me and push him off. There were two women. I mean, literally, there were people at the table who saw exactly what happened. At first, he said he didn't do it. Then he said, you know, he didn't remember. It just went on and on and on. And I thought I was fine. And this is a part I'm going to be very personal and very transparent. Ashley, because we've gone back for a long time, and I want people to understand the gravity of this. I thought I was fine. I went home. Then Wednesday, I went back to a dinner. I don't want, I didn't want him to drive me into hiding or into a hole. And I thought I was still fine. Wednesday night, I went to that dinner. Thursday morning, I could not get out of bed. And you know me, you know me for a long time. I pride myself on being a very strong woman. Ashley, I was crying uncontrollably. My assistant then, who had been with me for some 12 years, had never seen me like that, 
with all the tragedies and things I've had in my life, she'd never seen me quite like that. To the point, I couldn't even get up out of bed to go and get something to eat. I was a wreck. I literally started therapy that evening at six o'clock with Dr. Susan May. And so I would encourage people who are victims to do that, to seek the help. But this is what you were saying in the beginning. I've been an advocate. I have been fighting for people's rights. I've been doing things for victims. I've had so many victims in my courtroom over all these years. But now I'm on the other side of this. And when I went into therapy, I was saying to my therapist, why didn't I react? Why didn't I hit him? Why didn't I do something? And she said, because often victims feel that guilt for not reacting, but it is not uncommon for you just to be frozen because it's so unusual and you aren't expecting it. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.